I went to WeebCon in Dallas, Texas last week from Wednesday to Monday. So Holmes is my music partner. And when given the chance to perform at WeebCon, I decided to say, okay, you're coming with me to Texas. You and your girlfriend, Mar, can come with us and your girlfriend can be my pillar of support. And he said, okay, I'm down. He has not really traveled much. So he doesn't really know much about policies when it comes to checking in for your flight. And the three of us had a flight that left at eight in the morning. So I said, okay, get to my house around 6.30. He said, all right, sure. You think I should come earlier? When he texted me that, I was asleep because we had an early flight in the morning. Wednesday, the journey started off with a bang. I was texting him and saying, brother, where are you at? Where are you? I was up in time and we were waiting outside for him and his girlfriend. They didn't end up coming until 6.55. My dad sped. He did everything in his power to drive us to the airport. We got there at around 7.10. Holmes was all, oh, we're so gonna make it. I was saying, um, and while we did make it before the flight boarded, our homie forgot about the fact that there is a check-in bag time policy. And we missed the deadline to check our bags in by five minutes. So I slowly turn around. Well, Holmes, it seems we're missing this flight. Oh. And so I turn around to the desk lady. And so I, I looked at her and I said, excuse me, ma'am, is there any other flight that we can switch to? She said, yep, the only time that we can send you over is at 5 p.m. Another thing, guys, there's a big reason why we were supposed to fly in a whole extra day earlier than everybody else. Because Uland wanted to do an extra day of sound check with us because we were the only ones that were bringing musical instruments to our performance. So we wanted to do tech check and sound check stuff. Anyways, manager coon Seth was supposed to be on the same flight as us. So I'm texting Seth. I'm all, hey, bestie. So, um... <laughs> Seems like we're missing the flight. Bro said, huh? <laughs> Cause he was already in there waiting for us. And then Holmes walks up and asks the lady, um, is there any other way we can get on any other flight that's earlier than that? The lady gives him the angriest look and said, the 12 p.m. flight, zero availability. The 1 p.m. flight, zero availability. The 3 p.m. flight, zero availability. She just kept going, zero. 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 <laughs> and so after that, I said, you know, we'll take, we'll take the, we'll take the 4 or 5 p.m. We'll, we'll take it. We'll, it's okay. Yep, it's fine. Holmes decided. Um, so does this mess with any of our plans for Wednesday? I look at him. Um, we may have to change everything. <laughs> and he felt really, really, really bad. Luckily, Mar was with him and she goes up to him. It's okay, Pookie Bear. We didn't know any better. Me trying my best not to punch a hole in the wall, not towards him because he didn't know any better. But because of that, I was just nonverbal. I called my dad. So he just came back and that car ride home <laughs> was just so quiet. There was so much tension in the air because I think they could smell how angry I was. And this was number one. It all overflowed at the very end, but that's for later on in the story. Anyways, we ended up making it back to my house and I just took the fattest fucking nap of my life. And then we went on the flight and we made it over safely and Seth picked us up and it was all, yeah, my car is going to be big enough to fit all of your stuff. Don't even worry about it. It's an SUV. Um, we have a bass, a guitar, and like five fucking bags. He said, no, it'll be fine. It was not fine. Mar and Holmes were like crushed and everything was just right all over. Anyways, we made it over to the Uwu warehouse where we met up with everybody and they were taking us over to where the little sound check area was. The whole entire place was under construction because everything that was in there was going to be transported over to WeepCon to build Uwu land. So there was just wooden planks everywhere. And we plugged everything in and we did our little sound check and they said, wow, that sounds great. I said, yeah, thank you. But everything went nice and well. We did not eat much the whole entire day. So we ended the night by going over to in and out And then we went over to check into the hotel for the night. That was just Wednesday. We weren't even at WeebCon yet. And all of that happened to us on freaking Wednesday. Thursday. 
So the hotel for the night was a different hotel than the WeebCon. So we check out and we dropped off all of our stuff at the Ooh Market office. So then we were going to a mall because we had a lot of time before check-in at the Gaylord Convention Center. And we were looking for cowboy gear for the stream that I had later that day with rain. One hat was 150 freaking dollars. Just a simple vest, 150 bucks. We ended up going to Target. Anyways, we ended up going to Meow Wolf, which was like this really trippy place. It was so trippy. In the beginning, it was like me and Shox was next to me. And the girl just completely ignores me that was scanning the ticket to just talk to Shox. Sorry, this is really important. He's wearing a shirt that I really, really like. I actually have a tattoo and then Shox just looks at me with the most smug look I've seen from this man. And all the girls there were just getting ignored because this lady wanted to talk to Shox about his shirt. <laughs> but we make it inside and we were exploring and having a good time. I found everybody there. I literally ran into them in this giant ass strip of a maze. But I couldn't find Bao or Tricky or Yuzu or Vienna for the longest time. And we finally freaking found them in this refrigerator room. But we found everybody at this point, except Bao and Tricky. This part right here, this was a dance floor area of Yeah Wolf. There was a DJ just partying. And I said to Shox, I have such a good feeling that when we run into her it's gonna be right here and when we all made it over to the dance floor and we all started dancing i hear somebody going like oh yeah let's fucking get it we are so fucking back i fucking know i turned around bow fucking found us when we were all dancing there i called it and i knew it and we were all like moshing and then she started twerking in the middle of the dance floor and we all started going like hey 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 and that's how we ended up summoning bow and tricky it just felt things felt so right we had all of the girlies together after all of this time and afterwards we were very very hungry and we decided to go to a place called Torchy's Tacos, and I ordered a giant Uber, and everybody else ordered some Ubers too. Turns out we uh, ordered way more than needed, so everybody just went in the other Ubers. I guess me and Yuzu will go to Torchy's Tacos together. And we got a message from Tricky and them saying, yeah, we're here, we're ordering right now. We say, okay. We get out of the car, we open the door, and I realize something is off. I turn around and I look at Yuzu, and Yuzu looks back at me. Yuzu, something doesn't feel right. They're not here, are they? <laughs> and then she just looks at me and said, what do you mean? And I, I had to remind her of the fact that they said they were already ordering. I'm looking at the cashier. There's nobody there. We went to the wrong Torchy's taco. <laughs> Anyways, we had to go back because we had to go to sound check. And um, we all show up. We were there waiting for like two and a half hours. Sound check didn't happen. They told us that the company working with the hotel were behind on setting up. And so we were not allowed to set up that night and we had to wait until the next morning. Bao was freaking out. Bao was like, I'm going to shit myself. I need to practice our song. I need to finish learning our song. So I went up to Holmes and asked him if we can still practice the song somehow. And we did it by uh, plugging everything into our in-ears and using the microphone with the setup just not plugged into a PA system. So we relocated all of our shit to the very, very, very back corner of Uwu Land. And we performed it like three times in the corner. And uh, nobody could hear us but each other in our in-ears. And there's three parts of the song where I like moan. And I would just be moaning. So I would be like... <sighs> and then Mar and Holmes. And Bao would look at me and go like, what the? And the next morning happened. And we actually did have a somewhat successful sound check. So the guys were not very happy to see us there. They didn't even let me practice my full set. They didn't let Cinder do anything. And when Bao was practicing, they said, so are you practicing three or like everything? It pissed me off. They did not have a good attitude about us. Anyways, we decided to get some lunch. But before that, I wanted to see Lucy at her meet and greet. And then they're all like, I'm first in line for Lucy. Me just going, eh, 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 eh. And then we had a small second to breathe. And then it was finally time for the concert. There ended up being over 2,000 people there. And I had another problem in the beginning. One of the things that we were told would be there was a specific designated area for the content creators was not there. And so me, Seth, and Pharaoh were talking about it. And then that's when we made that little area in the corner with the ropes. 
so another problem holmes told me before the concert i need time to plug things in because one of the av guys yelled at him and threatened to kick him out and get his ass thrown out and banned from the hotel because when holmes was checking up on all of our stuff these guys were unplugging all of our shit and so holmes was like what the fuck and he was going to replug everything in and the guy just was like what the fuck are you doing cursing him out and then holmes was like i'm plugging in the shit that you unplugged you gotta fucking stop it i'm gonna get your ass thrown out if you do anything like that ever again but yeah we were so scared and so freaked out but we all put our hands down together and did a cheers together and at one point we got so many of our friends to just be there supporting us backstage and it felt like the most unreal thing that's ever happened it was genuinely one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me and i just want to say seeing this video before i went live to perform was like one of the most important reasons why my stage fright just went away after this it was time and then we got on stage and then we just performed After that, we got drunk, obviously, post-concert. We all got some drinks. We were hanging out in the lobby and figuring out what we wanted to do. We all went and hung out at Waffle House. There was probably 30 of us there, and we were all sitting at three tiny tables. And that lady that was our waitress did not really like us, I guess. But I, I said I feel bad, so I tipped her like 100 bucks, right? Because there were so many of us there. And then apparently somebody went to Waffle House the next day, and that same employee was there, and she was talking shit on us. And that person was friends with twin and texted twin she was talking to a co-worker going on about how late last night like 30 people came in and they all tried to sit at three tables then they wanted it all on just three tickets it was worth the pain and suffering because they tipped good so i asked if it was at like 3 a.m and she said yeah probably around then they just kept trying to get more and more people in those booths but yeah we did not have a chance to chill after that because the next morning our big meet and greet was a little worrisome because of how bad security was so we made sure this time that all of us would be together and go together. Except Bao, because, you know, Bao woke up late. So all of the girlies got dressed in maid outfits. And the meet and greet time happened. And there was a lot of interesting things that went on on Saturday. First of all, this guy that was navigating the line was rushing everybody aggressively. It kind of made me a little what the hell because he would be kind of tapping them and saying like, you gotta hurry, you gotta go, you gotta go. We're trying to keep the time, but I don't think you need to aggressively tell my beautiful Noombas and all of the other communities to do it in that manner right and so i was like what the fuck all of us were like who is this guy we later found out that guy was not msm staff or ululand staff he was just some guy that got in somehow and got an exhibitor badge i guess oh my god that's crazy two years in a row you would have thought you would think you would think but yeah aside from that the meet and greet went great and then arguably one of the worst things that could have happened at a convention so we were all ordering drinks at the bar and we were all like in our own little crowd waiting for the guy to pour the drinks for us and then when i turned around some girl just spawned in the middle of all of us so i assumed she was one of our friends and i ordered an extra drink for her because i thought she was part of our friend group and then like we all kind of look at her and we're like 
like, oh, so are you like a, a streamer or something? And she's like, no. And then I said, oh, so are you here for the convention then? And she's like, no, I actually saw that there was a convention somewhere down the road. And so I just took an Uber here. And I'm like, you're all on your own. Yeah, I heard it was an anime convention and I like anime. And I was like, oh, all right. Well, nice to meet you. Cheers to you. And so we all cheers and then had a drink. And in the middle of all of that, she was like, oh, you ordered me a drink. And I was like, yeah, I ordered everybody a drink. We're going to cheers together. And she said, oh, so you're the one that did this. And when she said that, she put her arm like around my side and was very inappropriate and immediately the way that i was being held just sent alarm bells off in my brain and then i looked at toma and i signaled down to what was happening and toma was like what the fuck i fucking asked her are you and she said oh am i and i was like uh oh but then she did not stop she just kept like grabbing me like that and i was like dude what the fuck this is weird like this has never happened to me before i didn't know what to do after this kamimi said something and she like pointed at kamimi and said kamimi randomly just knew who Kamimi was despite telling us she didn't know who any of us were she didn't even call her Camila she said Kamimi which is something that you would only know if you're a longtime viewer of any of us or Kamimi I overheard that and I said wait so you know who I am and she was like yeah I'm sorry I know who all of you guys are and after that i just said nope 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 so i walked away and in the time of me walking away i turn around and then i see toma and kamimi running away from her and she was like wobbling towards them and kamimi was just like holy shit and then toma was like no me no me no me running towards me but um she ended up just wobbling up to me and just collapsing onto me and at this point i realized oh this girl is fucking wasted at this point it got even worse we were like by a chair i kind of looked over at shocks and i was like uh oh and this girl tries to you know come on to me and i was like hey no 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 after this toma just starts shouting i gotta shit i gotta shit myself knew me i gotta shit so toma was trying her best to help in a way that didn't revolve around getting physical but this girl was just completely ignoring toma she was only focusing on me and so i realized that she's gonna follow us no matter what and then i just ended up fucking sat her down i was like okay do you need anything else you want me to get you an uber or anything and she's like no I'm like, okay and then after i sat her down she just stayed there and after i sat her down i just went up to everybody i'm like we need to fucking go we need to fucking go and so after that we all just went away and then i called pharaoh and asked him if we could go to ulu land somewhere where nobody could come up to us and he said okay and so the rest of the night was all spent in a nice closed off area away from everybody and in that moment of time i was able to process what the fuck just happened and i was like oh my god that 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 was not good what just happened that was not good that was not good from what i was able to gather in that small frame of time was that this girl was obviously intoxicated doesn't make anything she did any better but yeah i was quickly cheered up after that though because everybody just came to my side to ask if i was okay and yeah turns out that she was actually like looking for us actively we found out who it was we always find out so she's gone <laughs> after that though we ended up finding two rooms that were connecting and booked it i was like i'm booking it boys so i booked the suite and i'm like we're gonna make it so people can have a nice safe place to hang out and, and just have a good time and then we're like yeah let's try to fit like you know maybe 30 people so i started making the list we ended up 50 fucking people because after this i went to bed and woke up sunday ready for my meet and greet with yuzu which i'm so sorry again i don't want to show when i'm upset like that but unfortunately it shows through when things like this happen so in the morning it was supposed to be my meet and greet with yuzu at the uwu land booth things ended up happening that made it so i left and we moved to the novel horizons booth instead but yeah afterwards we ended up doing a spa it's a korean spa so the korean spa system works very differently than a normal spa would where they give you a wristband they give you a locker and they give you a uniform and you can go into a bunch of different sauna rooms together so the wristband is what you use to open your locker and to buy food because they have a cafeteria inside so we ended up eating first because we did not get to eat during the day aside from my one bag of chips and then after that we had our massages and then it was time for us to all just get naked <laughs> there is like four pools a steam sauna and a cold pool and a bunch of showers anyways it was just me and bao sitting in the steam room before the other girlies joined it and i was wondering i turned over to bao and i was like what do you think would happen if i just spread my cheeks and just opened it do you think the steam would open up the pores in my holes and then she said probably right as i was talking about that the rest of the girls come in and then i was like i guess it's time for me to stand up and open my cheeks and in the same second we realized that it wasn't just the girl that walked in but some other lady 
And then she was like, oh, just shaking her head. And she was like, oh, I ain't no fucking way. <laughs> and we were just sitting there and we were just bonding. Yuzu asked me such an odd question. She's like, Numi, do my boobs look bigger than the last time you saw them? And I just kind of look at her, what the fuck? But she asked me to, so I just hard stared at her titties. And I said, yep, yep. And she's like, thank you, I care that myself. And Cinder was like, what the fuck? I'm like, I know, Cinder, this is just how it is. But then we got to have our deep talks together. We rinsed our bodies and then we went into a bunch of the different saunas and just hung out together. And then we made our way over to my party that I was hosting. Slowly but surely, everybody showed up and just had an incredible time together. Yuzu ended up putting me to bed and I just knocked out in one of the rooms. And in the other room, Bao, Tricky, and Kamimi were watching like fucking baby sensory videos. And all falling asleep on the bed together and then a bunch of people were just collapsed on the couch nobody wanted to leave which i think lets me know that everybody had a really nice time i think the last person left at literally six in the morning just a great last day it was an ideal party and uh, i'm just really happy about it but what i wasn't happy about was the fact that everybody forgot about me and i woke up in the suite nobody was there and i didn't know what was going on so i woke up in a cold sweat and i was like where the fuck what the fuck? Where the fuck am I? And I look at my phone. It was 1130. Check out 12 p.m. So I immediately jump out of the bed. And then I was like, oh, God, I know I told to put my guitar in one of the suites. It was not in the suite that I was in. And I try to run over to the other suite. It was locked. And I run over and I see that the guy was in there and I was like, please, sir, I need to get my guitar. They're like, we're going to need to call security. And so they called fucking security up and I had to show ID and show proof of who I was in order to get my fucking guitar back. And then I ran all the way across because the suites were on the opposite side of where my actual hotel room was. And in the midst of my running, I found Shocks and I was like, Shocks, help me, Shocks, Shocks, help me. And then we just ran together and then we, he brought my guitar to my room for me. And then I got over to my room and then I packed as quick as I fucking could and I made it out right before checkout time. After that though, we took an Uber over to Godzilla and boys, that is when my hangover hit and I fell asleep for like 10 minutes and then like woke up to Cinder being like, isn't this so funny? And I was like, oh, yeah, Cinder, yeah, Cinder. And so I was just talking and hanging out. I ordered food and popcorn, but I didn't even eat it because I was so dead. But yeah, it was a really good movie. And then we went over to Texas Roadhouse and boys, I never felt the life be put back into me as fast as when I ate that salad. My hangover gone after i ate that salad i was like yummy yummy and then after that we had to make our way back and go over to the airport together and then we make it to the airport and i go to check in my bags and then i look at my phone and it said my flight was delayed to the next day and i told the lady i was like my flight said it's delayed to the next day and she's like oh is there any way we can change it no i don't think there's a way for me to get you on any of those oh okay um maybe there's one that'll go out of a different airport and i can just take a, a long uber ride back home so she said oh yeah we found one for you and then she switches me to that one and then the time it took her to do that she said oh they undelayed your flight and i was like oh uh, oh, okay. Well, I guess we can put me back on that one then. She said, yep, we'll put you back on that one. Thank you very much. And while I was waiting, I noticed flight boards in 10 minutes. I was like, this doesn't seem right. And then I looked closer. My original flight was at Terminal D. The flight that I was looking at was Terminal C. So the woman put me on an earlier flight that was supposed to leave in 10 minutes in a completely different terminal. And so I just fucking book it. I run as fast as I fucking could. And I thought it was just by running to the seas. Nope, you had to take a fucking train to get to the next terminal and i ran so fast that i made it right as they were booking and you know who i run into top and i said wait a minute we're on the same flight the lady ended up putting me on the same flight back as tomatov and suko but uh the flight back was pretty chill but yeah that's my weep con story yeah, we tried our best to make you guys have a good time as best as we could. I know there's some things that were out of our control, but despite that, I hope you guys had a good time. Meeting you guys made everything worth it in the end. Like, no matter what, I still think WeebCon's like my favorite convention. Despite everything that happens, it's like there's so much action happening that you can't help but enjoy 